Here's just a recap of them. So we're saying, okay, we're going to kind of go ahead of household. Uh, but we've got this unusual scenario where they're not our dependent. For example, your unmarried qualified child who isn't your dependent. Uh, your, your married qualified child who isn't your dependent only because you can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's uh, 2022 return. Your qualifying child who, even though you are the custodial parent, isn't your dependent because of the rule of children of divorced or separated parents. Now that's kind of unusual, but if that was the case, then you're not going to see it down here. So if you were to just remove the dependent down here and still uh, have a head of household claim. So if I was to say, I'm just going to make this, let's say inactive right now, we'll just delete it. If I go back on over, now I've got a head of household claim, but nothing on the face of the return indicating a qualificating factor because I don't have the dependent because they don't qualify as a dependent. So then I would have to put them basically right here. So they would basically go right here on the form. So that's unusual, but might come up. So here we have an example, head of household. And this would be the qualifying kind of factor that we're putting into play here, even though there's not a dependent down below. Okay. So now let's move up. Let's, let's actually go back to just, to just where we were before, and then we'll move to a married status. So I'm going to say, let's go back to just the single status. So I'm going to go back to single boom, and then let's move up to a married filing uh, joint situation. So now we're going to say they get married. Now, if they get married anytime in 2022, even if it's in December, then you would count it as married. So that's that cutoff kind of question that comes into play with regards to getting married. Then uh, you're, you're going to, as long as it happened within the tax year, in this case, 2022, it would be moved. It would be within uh, married filing joint possible or married filing separate if they are married. So that's kind of a consideration you want to keep in mind if anybody asks you about, you know, tax planning and being married. Oftentimes getting married is a tax benefit if you're like in the middle income kind of area because the, the the standard deductions will double typically and so will the and so will the tax tables will typically be beneficial but if you're on the low income and people are getting the child tax credits and the earned income tax credit it's possible you end up in a situation where it's not a uh, beneficiary from a tax basis doesn't mean you don't want to do it but you might want to think okay sh where should i have it in 2022 with the current tax year or maybe have another tax year without getting married and, and plan it after that time or something like that right so in any case let's move it up to married so now of course moving the filing status to married you'd, you'd be pushing it over here and of course then you would expect that you have a, a spouse involved another social security number involved uh, on uh, the tax return and the implications down below would be on the standard deduction increases significantly we'll talk more about the standard deductions later but you can see a big a jump there, which is indicated in this little box to the left. And on page two, you can have a big difference in terms of the tax rates uh, as well, because the progressive tax tables will be different from married uh, to single. Now, of course, when you think about people getting married from a projection standpoint, you, you have to think, okay, yeah, the standard deduction got doubled, but before you had two tax returns that both had. So the question is when you combine the incomes together and whatnot, are you are you better or worse off from a total tax standpoint the two tax returns two separate entities now being combined into one entity and so those projections you got to keep that in mind when you're doing those kind of projections as opposed to if you're moving from single to head of household where you're really dealing with just one person at that point in time or now you have a dependent possibly but when you're going from obviously single to married filing joint you got two tax returns that you're now putting together. So, so when you're trying to think of, would you be better off uh, with two tax returns versus one, you got to take that into consideration. Now, of course, the other option is to file married filing separately. Uh, if marriage, you can't go back to single or head of household unless divorcing or separating. So let's go back on over and say, okay, let's go to, uh, let's go to married. If we go to married filing separate, this is what it looks like up top filing status. Now we've got the married filing separate status and n down below, we don't have the spouse located here, but rather, you know, up top to indicate the, the other factor involved. We've got the social security 
uh, number here. So obviously from the IRS's perspective, they would expect then if this spouse was filing married filing separate, that the other spouse would also be filing that way. So they would expect you would think to have another return. Yeah, and maybe I'll file a federal income tax return. And this will, will help them to kind of tie that in and say, okay, both spouses are doing that. If the other spouse filed single and this spouse filed married filing separate, you would think that the IRS, just in terms of their machine, just in terms of their computer would say, hey, wait, something funny is happening here. Now, as you would expect with the, the rates down below, the, the standard deduction is going to go back down kind of to what it was in a single and the tax rates are going to go back uh, to similar to what you would expect on a single area. But married filing separate is not the same as filing single. So you want to make sure to keep that in mind. If, if people are asking questions in terms of, well, if I get married, then if I lose some of the benefits that I had while being single, such as possibly benefits for the child tax credits and the earned income tax credit, well then I can always just bounce back to basically being single or head of household for taxes by using the married filing separately. You can't basically, you can't do that because the married filing separately will likely not give you the same kind of benefits for those types of things. So, so because the, the government's gonna be wary of people choosing between married filing joint or married filing separate just to take advantage of certain credits like those kinds of credits so they kind of eliminate them in essence when you file married filing separately so be careful of that also be careful that the way you treat married filing separately could differ depending on state law whether you're in a community property state or not so it could be a little kind of confusing in terms of how to file married filing se separate now now note that remember that the idea of getting married at least from a from a legal standpoint from a contractual standpoint is now that you're a partnership you're like one legal entity so it's supposed to be kind of difficult from that perspective to file separately because you're supposed to be one kind of legal entity it would be expected you're filing married filing joint you guys are doing a joint file so to kind of parse things out and split them is a little bit you know unusual that's not what what normally happens but you know you could do that under certain circumstances so that is that one and then you've got of course the qualifying uh surviving spouse so if in the year of 2022 uh someone uh a spouse passed away that wouldn't be the date that you would be filing the qualifying surviving spouse generally you'd still be filing married because the second spouse would still have income or possibly could during that year so you'd need at least one more year the final year for that spouse to file and you'd get the benefit of having a married filing joint return in the year of death of one of the spouses and then in the year after the question is is there a a, a qualifying dependent generally uh, to, to qualify as qualifying surviving spouse, which would be a better status than head of household or single. So that would be the way to go if you can. If not, then you're gonna bounce back most likely to single because you don't have a qualifying dependent, which would move you up to head of household or surviving spouse. So surviving spouse being head, better than the head of household. So let's take a look at that. So now we've got the qualifying surviving spouse. Uh, and in that case, you, you would expect then to have generally a dependent a dependent down here uh, in order to hit that qualification and if you didn't have the dependent then you would expect it, you'd be bouncing back to single uh after that so i basically put in that the year of death was was prior was 2021 because again if the year was of death was 2022 you'd be filing married uh filing joint so then after that year of death then the question is should you file as we saw single head of household or 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 qualifying surviving spouse and you would think that you would have that dependent in order to to, to do that third one so once we get to as we looked at these kind of dependents notice that we have some interrelationships here between the filing status and the dependents and then the the standard deductions as well as the tables on uh, the second page so in future presentations we're going to focus more on the standard deduction so when we dive into the standard deduction we'll, we'll also be touching on the filing statuses again 